All right. Greetings. Welcome back. We now have everything that we really wanted to assemble, put into our level, and we're more or less set to go. But before we close off, I wanted to make sure that we got a chance to put in some light mapping. Right. With light mapping, in this um, particular case, we're going to go through it really fast. There are tons and tons of settings that are uh, involved in this. We're not really going to get into all of them. We have another series that's more in-depth that um, will be released soon. It may already be out by the time you watch these videos. And we have another series that's in the works that is an advanced treatment on using the Beast Light Mapping Engine that's built into Unity. Well, that's so, great because, I mean, I was going to start off and say I was tired of doing all the talking. I was going to let Lee pretty much lead on this one, and then um, he just kind of started talking. So you're on a roll now. What do we do, Lee? All right, well, like I said, we're going to go through this really fast, try to get uh, a little bit um, more atmosphere into our scene. Well, so, what's the point of light mapping anyway? Well, light mapping is a way of getting shadows and the play of light into our scene and baking it pre-runtime so we get all the performance of... Uh, Having a scene that looks like it's very dynamically lit mm -hmm. with bounce light, we could literally have hundreds or thousands of lights, but we don't incur the penalty of trying to render out all these lights and shadows in real time. Right. I'll boil it all down to one word, pre-calculation. All of the hardcore aspects of lighting, the shadows, and how our surfaces look underneath all of this light is calculated before the player even jumps into the game. And it's more or less put down as a texture. Yes. So, how do we do this? Well, let's start off simply by first getting some shadows in. Okay. Gonna, these are going to be dynamic shadows. I'm not really going to get into the explanations, as I said. So, we're going to just put in some settings real fast to get some uh, shadows and lights thrown around this scene. Where do we start? So, let's jump over to the sunlight. Mm -hmm. And that's over in our hierarchy view, so we'll click on the sunlight. And now what? All right, go to shadow type, and we're going to change it from no shadows to soft shadows. All right, I'm going over to the inspector and about halfway down we see shadow type currently set to no shadows and we're going to set this to what? Soft shadows. Soft shadows. Kablam. So as you can uh, see we've now got some shadows. Yeah. They're a bit intense for the uh, overcast lighting that we're getting. And for being on snow. I don't think you'll ever see shadows that sharp on snow because yeah. light tends to kind of diffuse through snow. So let's go to the strength, which is right underneath shadow type in mm -hmm. our inspector, and let's dial that down to around 0 0.3, 0 0.4. That's somewhere in there. We'll just kind of drag it around until it looks right. I like doing things with sliders if I can. Especially shadows. It just yeah. looks so cool. Okay, sorry. So let's say somewhere around 0.3. That looks pretty good. Right. Let's go jump in and play it real quick. Okay. So, you know, just a little bit has already increased the look of the scene quite a bit. Now, if you are running just like regular Unity and you don't have Pro, do you have these shadows? No, you do not. Okay, I just thought I'd point that out. <laughs> so you have to be using uh, Pro to get uh, the advantage of dynamic shadows. Gotcha. But it is pretty cool. It is pretty cool. Okay, so now what? If we wanted to go ahead and take this and push it into the world of light mapping, what's our next step? Okay, well, our next step is we've got to um, prep for light mapping. Um, so we need to set our objects as static. Light mapping only works with static objects, meaning objects that aren't animated and moving around your scene. It would be kind of awkward if you had something in your scene, let's say a car, and it was marked as static. You baked out a shadow. It's casting onto the sidewalk, the side of a building. And then you decide to drive that car away, and the shadow's still there. That's right. And you got to remember, again, what I was saying at the beginning of the video, this is all about pre-calculation and applying the results of all of your lights and shadows as if they were a texture. In effect, it, like if you tried to make it uh, analogous to the real world, it would be like just painting all of your shadows onto the wall, mm -hmm. which is fine for objects that are going to sit still all day. But as soon as you move them and the shadow stays behind, it starts to look really funny. Right. So what we're going to do is start flagging our objects as being static. Now, what objects are we most interested in? Well, we're going to be interested in our camp. Okay. So I'm going to select the camp yep. here inside the hierarchy view, and then I'll fly over to the inspector. And in the upper rightmost corner of the inspector, there's a tiny little checkbox labeled static. Now, as soon as we check this, a little warning is going to pop up that says, hey, did you want to do this to the object and all of its child objects as well? And we're going to say, yes, change the kids too. All over the children, sorry. <laughs> so now what? The tunnel. The tunnel. Okay, yeah, we same, need to do same the tunnel. Treatment. Yep. Right. Same, same principle. Click on the tunnel and fly up here to static. 
and click and say yes to change children. Right. And then we would just want to verify that our train is also marked as static. It, All right. It should be by default, but All we're right. just going to verify it. Click on it, and static is indeed checked. Okay, so it is that sta um, static. The only other one that I can think of that we might want to look at is our hot spring water. Mm -hmm. Just the water plane, not the whole thing. Okay. So you want to expand so that explain, out. Explain, explain. Let's see, we got hot the, spring water. Yeah, the daylight water. Daylight water right there. Yep, so and we'll check that one. Make sure yet. that's static. Right. Now, it is animated, but that's a textural animation. The object itself is not moving. Yeah, we're talking about like actual vertex animation where the vertices are moving from one place to another. Yes. Okay. Now what? So um, with that, we need to do one more step inside of our meshes, the FBX files themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you open up your My FBX folder. Look how organized everything is. I mean, you know right where to go. If you click on Camp, okay. this is actually the FBX file that we're importing. Now, underneath the FBX importer, you see the generate colliders that we checked earlier. And below that, there's a generate light map UVs. Okay, so back over in the inspector, about halfway down, we're inside the FBX importer component. And if you look down, there's generate light map and UVs. I realize there's a lot of stuff in here, so look really closely to find the checkbox and, and check click it. it. And then apply. Now, basically, what this is doing is when you bring in an object from Maya, you've already laid out the UVs. If you're doing optimization on your UV maps, you may have overlapping UVs. Where light maps are concerned, it has to have a UV set that has no overlapping UVs whatsoever. By generating this UV set, it will generate a 0 to 1 UV space for you with no overlapping UVs. Now, that's not to say that you couldn't take that same model and set up a second UV set that has your UVs laid out with no overlaps if you want to. So you could do it yourself or you can tell Unity to do it. Exactly. Okay. And I'm kind of lazy, so I just tell Unity to do it for me. <laughs> no worries. All right. So we've already set this to generate the light map UVs. And we can click the Apply button, which is down here toward the bottom of the inspector. Generally, you do have to scroll down to find it. If you forget for some reason, and then you jump over, because we have to do the same thing to our tunnel. Right. So if I click on the tunnel, we're going to get a window that pops up that says Unapplied Import Settings. Do Would you like to apply those now, basically? So we'll go ahead and click Apply. And that takes care of that for us. So you are kind of covered if you forget to click the Apply button. So now we're over here inside of Tunnel. Let's do the exact same thing. Here is our Generate Light Map UVs. We'll check that. Scroll down. And this time we really will click Apply. Excuse me. And there we go. Now what, Lee? All right. Well, let's um, go ahead and open up our Light Mapping window, which you'll find under the Window dropdown. Mm -hmm. Towards the bottom, third from the bottom, says Light Mapping. Now okay. if you open this up, there are several different panes. Like I said, I'm not going to go in depth on what all this stuff does. We have other video series that cover it. Okay. So if you go ahead and click on your sunlight. All right. And select that. Ooh. It, it starts to come to life. We're just going to put in two numbers in here real quick. Go to shadow samples mm -hmm. and dial that up to eight. All right. Now, generally, what is that going to do for us? Well, it's basically going to sample the calculations for the shadows. And the more samples that we do, the better results we're going to get. We incur a penalty at, pre, or at render time, but this is all pre-game. This does not affect anything that happens when we're rendering. So it'll look really or nice, but it won't necessarily it. slow down the game. Correct. Okay, cool. Shadow Ango, um, we're going to set to 5. What this does is it basically softens out the outer edges of the sh um, shadow, so we don't have these real nice, somewhat crisp edges that we have now. Gotcha. Now, all I did is go over here to the number field and actually punch in 5. And as Lee said, that's just going to soften up the outer edge of these shadows. Right. Now what? Let's go to bake. Okay. Now, the, he doesn't mean the bake button. He the means bakes. the bake heading up here at the very top of the window. Right. So we'll come over here to the bake settings. Now right. what? Well, let's drop the quality down right now for uh, low quality. Mm-hmm. So we, all we really have is high and low. Yep. It's kind of like playing pole position. So we'll switch this down to low. Right. Take bounces down to uh, zero. Okay. So we'll click on bounces, put that to zero. And that's the number of times that light is going to bounce around and, and kind of give the illusion that you know we have color right. bleeding and things like that. But what I'm doing is um, emulating anybody who's using the free standard version of Unity. Okay. This is what this panel is probably going to look like to you. You may see the bounces, but I believe it's um, grayed out in yours, so you can't change that number. Okay. What that means is you lose global illumination. You don't have the ability to bake that out. You do have the ability to bake out light maps, and you can use ambient inclusion as well to help bake them out. We're 
we're going to use it later. What I'm doing right now is we're going to do a test bake that's going to try to do something a lot faster. When we dial in our real settings, we'll actually end the video because it's going to take a good 20, 30 minutes for that bake to happen. Okay. And when we do that, we'll just be ending that video. We're not going to come back just to show you how pretty it looks. We'll go ahead and call it there. And then when we come back, we're going to take a look at, well, we will show you what it looks like, but then we're going to take a look at another subject while we're at it. Correct. So uh, where do we go from here? Lee? All right. Well, with these settings set, we've got enough to do an initial test bake. So go ahead and hit the bake button All right. on the bottom. And it's going to take a bit to spool up. What it's doing is it's figuring out what's in the scene that it has to generate. Um, the Those UVs for it's going to start baking it. Sometimes you have errors that pop up. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Okay. So we don't stress that it says the material doesn't have a color property. Correct. Okay. Look at me not stressing, man. I'm just <laughs> relaxing. I'm sober you're hanging out. So as, as you can see, we've got a little blue progress bar in the lower right-hand corner. And it's doing all kinds of stuff. Yep. And it does even more stuff when you have the global illumination turned on and it's banking that out. The problem is, is the more complex your scene gets to be, the longer these renders can take. Yeah. We have our test level for one of the projects that we've been recording that if you do the high resolution bakes, it literally takes about seven to eight hours to bake out. Yeah, it's one of those kind of things you do overnight. Yeah, so it's basically you hit bake and then you go to bed. Mm -hmm. But this is not something that you want to, you know, add a tree, bake out a new light map, add another tree, bake out another light map. You exactly, which is where it becomes important to do things like test bakes to get a general idea of how things are going to look and then start cranking up your quality settings from there. Exactly. So this will be done in a little bit. The whole reason that I'm doing this real quick um, bake in this video is because I want to be able to show you how to look at the light maps that are coming in. You may or may not um, be able to see them with the default settings that you have. And mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how you can preview the actual bake. Gotcha. Because oh, I still got a little bit. What happens is the Unity engine is smart enough to calculate dynamic lights up close to the camera and then it uses these light maps further off in the distance. We have full control over sliding where that um, transition becomes. Oh, nice. And it also depends on what rendering paths you're in. We'll cover that as well later. All right, so here we go. Yep, right now it's actually writing out these EXR files, which are actually the light maps themselves, and it's applying them to our materials. Okay. So. Here we go. Yep. If you go ahead and or move that window down off to the side. All right. Well, I can just slide it over here. Yep. All right. Now, if you look at our window, it's changed dramatically. Oh, yeah. Now, we also have this little uh, previs panel called Light Map Display. Now, here's a trick that we can do. Go ahead and go back to our sunlight, which we've already got. So, mm -hmm. slide. Turn it off. Okay. Ooh. As you can see, we now have no lights in our scene, but it looks like we do still. And I'll kind of click that on and off. What we're losing is our vertex lighting when we turn that off. So that we're getting from our forward lighting path. Now, here's a trick that we can do. Go ahead and turn that um, off. Mm -hmm. Actually, turn it back on. Okay, it's back on. Okay, now see our shadow distance? Mm -hmm. Dial that down to zero. All right, that's here in the light map display. We'll take our shadow distance and push that to zero and press enter. All right, so now go ahead and turn off our light map. Okay. So now we've got our, no lights. Everything that we're doing is based off of our shadow distance. So if you slide the shadow distance and pull that away, you're, we're not, nah, never mind. I know why we're not seeing anything. I didn't bake out GI. Otherwise, oh, because yeah. it, global I, illumination gives us two different effects. We don't have bounce light, so we're not seeing that. Right. I was, I was trying to figure out, and I was like, wait a minute, I'll bet we're not seeing any global right. illumination. But effects. if you turn That's our okay. light back on, yeah, and we dial that in, what it would be doing is trading off between our um, global illumination, our near light map. This gets into more complex conversation again. Right. But basically, what we're showing is we've got our, our base light map. This is a texture that it created, and you can now turn off your lights, and we have no lights in our scene. Everything has been baked out. And taking down those lights and being able to switch those off will really help with performance when we can do it. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, now not worrying about the shadow distance thing right now, is there anything else we need to do? Um, well, we're going to do a high-res bake after this, but if you want to play and run around the scene, sure. Turn. You can turn off the light, too, just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and do that, then. So we'll switch that off. 
So we do lose some of that underlighting that we're getting from dynamic, um, the dynamic lighting. Right, on the, the leaves and whatnot. Right, and if we actually had a character and you were looking around, you wouldn't see your own shadow. Mm -hmm. But because we're in first person, we don't really have a character, you're not going to see it anyways. But it's something that we'd probably leave on for the fidelity of the trees. Mm -hmm. But if we were using Unity Pro and we had the advanced light mapping, mm -hmm. we could actually um, bake out a high-res version with global illumination and bounce light, and technically we could get away without using any lights whatsoever. If we're really getting into it, and if we're using the deferred lighting path with lots of different lights, we can make this pop even more. And so you would have really good looking lighting up close to the camera, mm -hmm. and then we'd be completely uh, relying on shadow maps or light maps in the distance. Nice. Which gives us a nice performance trade off. All right, so let's set up to do our nice bake. All right. Well, to do our nice bake, what we're going to do is um, go bring our light map panel back over. So go back under the window menu. Well, you've already got it open. Oh, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's hiding over here. Hello. So let's bring it back in. Actually, click on maps real quick. I, I just mm -hmm. want to show what's going on. These are the maps that uh, Beast decided that we needed it baked out and laid out all of our UVs for. This is actually where all of our shadows are coming from. Nice. So I just wanted you to yeah. see what is being baked out. So let's dial in some high res. Go ahead and go to quality. Okay. Change that to high. Okay. Go to bounces. Number of bounces. How many are we going to use? We're going to use one bounce. One bounce. Okay. Okay. Now, this is the number of bounces that light are going to bounce in for our global illumination. Mm -hmm. Now, the skylight color is the color that it's going to use for these bounces. Sure. Now, with an intensity of zero, we're not going to get any bounces, so we're going to dial that up to about 0.25. So, that'll give us a nice um, bounce light, soft light on the bottoms of the trees and start to fill in. Okay. So, the other thing that we're going to do is ambient inclusion. Um, bump that up to about 0.4. All right, down here we'll take ambient occlusion, 0.4, sir. Yep, and we're going to leave it there, and that should be good for an initial high-res bake. It should be good enough for our needs. Like I said, there's tons and tons of settings in here. We're not going to go into all of them, but if you start playing with them, you can get some really fantastic-looking uh, um, light maps in the whole system. Okay, is there anything else we need to do? Other than baking and then closing out this video now. <laughs> all right, so what I'm going to do is... Click, well, I'm not even going to click on bake here because as soon as I click on bake, it's just going to start calculating and then I'm going to end the video. So I'm not even going to worry about that. When we come back in the next video, we'll take a look at the results of this bake, which could take a, a little bit of time. Right. Depending on your machine, it could take significantly longer. When I'll tell you about how long it took uh, when we get back. And then we're going to take a look at how we can uh, grab this game that we've put together now, this little level, and turn it into an executable that you could give to your friends and they could actually play it. But we'll take a look at that in the upcoming video. Until then, thanks a lot.